In this lesson, we're going to be using graphs of functions to describe relationships between quantities. The success criteria is I can describe relationships between quantities and graphs, and I can sketch graphs given verbal descriptions of relationships. Graphs can show the relationship between quantities without using specific numbers on the axis. Okay, so if I have a distance versus time graph, you can see as I have a positive slope here, that means that the distance is increasing. And then if it stays flat here at horizontal, that means that there's no change. It's staying the same. It's constant. And then if the slope is negative here, I'm going down. So that means that the value of the distance over time is decreasing. For example one, the graph shows the temperatures throughout the day in two cities. I have Belfast, Maine and Newport, Oregon. So I'm going to zoom in on the graphs. Part A says to describe the change in temperature in each city. So for Belfast, Maine, we can see that the temperature starts low at the beginning of the day, and we can, and we can see as time goes on throughout the day, it's increasing, and that rate of increasing is slowing down here until I get to the very top temperature, it looks like sometime in the middle of the day, and this is going to be the highest temperature of the day, but it doesn't stay there for long because it starts now to decrease slowly, and then the closer it gets to nighttime, what I'm imagining is nighttime, the temperature starts falling at a faster rate. All right, And then in Newport, Oregon, we see that the temperature is starting off high, and then it's decreasing over time. Then it stays at the same temperature, right? So this temperature is not changing for this chunk of time. And then when it gets to right here, it slowly starts to increase. So I'm just going to jot some of that down here. So for Belfast, the temperature starts low. and then increases, but the rate that it's increasing starts to slow down as the day goes on. So rate of increase slows down as the day goes on. Then the temperature right temp starts to decrease and you can see that it starts to decrease faster and faster as the day goes on so I'm gonna say it starts to decrease more and more as the day goes on I was running out of space, so I just made a little bit more. So now we're going to do uh, Newport. So if we go back up to this graph, we see that it decreases at a constant rate and then stays the same and then increases at a slower rate. So the temp decreases at a constant rate. then it stays the same for a bit. Then it increases at a slightly slower rate. All right, so after all that writing, we're done with part A. Now, time for part B. Write an explanation for the decrease in temperature and the increase in temperature in Newport, Oregon. So let's go back up to this graph. So we see over time, and we don't know how much time has elapsed here, but over time we see that we're starting off higher, then the temperature decreases, and then it stays the same for a bit, and then it slowly starts to increase. So there's multiple explanations for this, but you could think of maybe a storm, okay? So the temperature is up here, and then a storm comes, and as the storm's approaching, the weather cools down. And then while the storm's happening, it stays at the consistent temperature. And then when the storm stops, then the temperature comes back up. So that's just one example. Like I said, you could have multiple examples. So storm getting colder when the storm approaches.
stays cold during the storm. and then gets warmer after the storm. All right, so after all those explanations, now we're done with example one. You can sketch graphs showing relationships between quantities that are described verbally. So in this example, a stop subway train gains speed at a constant rate until it reaches maximum speed. It travels at this speed for a while and then slows down at a constant rate until coming to a stop at the next station. Sketch a graph that represents this situation. Well, all I need is my first quadrant here. So I'm going to draw some axes. And I'm dealing with speed and time, so I'm going to put speed on the vertical axis, and then time on the horizontal axis. Anyway, we know that we start with a stopped train, okay? So if the train stopped, the speed's gonna be zero. So my first point is gonna be right here. And then I know that I am increasing my speed until I reach a maximum speed. So I'll be going up for a bit, and I'm increasing the speed at a constant rate. So I'll go up right here, so maybe something like that, near my mouse, right here. And I'm gonna draw a line segment through that using my line segment tool. Well, then it says the speed reaches the maximum speed and it stays there for a while. So let's say that this is the maximum speed and it's just gonna stay here at this speed for a while. So I'm gonna draw another line segment. So something like this. This might not be perfectly horizontal, but that's okay. We're just sketching. Anyway, then it slows down at a constant rate until it comes to a stop. So it's gonna slow down at a constant rate. So I'm just gonna have it go from here to here. It's gonna be a line segment because constant rate of change means that it's a linear relationship. So something like this might uh, be able to describe this situation. Anyway, now we're done with example two. For this example, the graph shows the distances traveled by two runners in a race from start to finish. Describe the speed of each runner throughout the race, then determine who finishes first. Well, if you look at runner A first, we see that they start zero, right? And then they increase their speed at a constant speed because this is a line. And then their distance doesn't change at all from here to here. So that means that they stopped, right? If you stay in the same distance and you're not moving at all, then they pick up their speed again at a constant rate until they finish, right? So for runner A, they run at a constant speed. Then they stop for a second, or however long this period of time is. And then they continue running at a constant speed until they finish. All right, I'm gonna zoom out here so we can talk about runner B. Well, if you see, they start at a slightly slower pace than runner A because the slope of this part of the line is going to be slower. Okay, so they start at a constant speed till, I don't know, maybe around here. So run at a slower speed. I should put constant in here. Constant slower speed. than A, runner A. But then right around here, they start to increase their speed at a nonlinear rate right here. So this speed is increasing faster than a constant rate. So what I'm gonna write down here is increasing speed So that, that would happen right around here. And if you note, they both stop at this distance right here. So this distance right around here, that's where both of these, runner A and runner B, stop. So right here, we know that this is gonna be the finish line because that's where they both stop. And you can see here 
that runner B is going to get there before runner A. Okay, now that these are obviously not uh, perfect dotted lines, but you can tell that runner B is going to arrive at an earlier time than runner A. So anyway, that is how we can determine who finishes first. So we know that runner B is going to be the winner. So runner B is the winner. Congrats to runner B. Anyway, now we're done with this one.